let's take a look at the history of public employee labor relations. Public employee labor organizations were present in the national government as early as the 1830s. However, modern union activity didn't exist until the early 1900s. Although the National Labor Relations Board, the NLRB, was established in 1935, unionized public employee organizations were discouraged until the 1960s. National Labor Relations Board is an independent federal agency created in 1935 to enforce the National Labor Relations Act. The NLRB conducts secret ballot elections to determine whether employees want union representation and investigates unfair labor practices by employers and by unions. A turning point for public sector labor unions came in 1962 when President John F. Kennedy issued Executive Order 10988. It was extended to national government employees the right to organize and engage in collective bargaining. Among other things, it provided for withholding of union dues for advisory arbitration of employee grievances and prohibited union shops in which all employees are compelled to be union members. Although this order legally altered only national government policy on bargaining with its own employees, states and local governments were also challenged to re-examine and possibly change labor management negotiation policies. Following Kennedy's executive order, there began a period of intensive growth and in membership of most unions, spurred by deliberate efforts on the part of various union organizers to increase membership. By 2009, 1.1 million federal civilian employees, or 33%, were represented by over 100 labor unions. The number of union members is not the same as the number of employees having union representation. The latter is almost always considerably higher than the former because those who do not pay union dues can also be represented in collective bargaining and are governed by any contractual agreements that are reached. Three new regulatory entities were created by executive order to centralize decision making that had previously been in the hands of individual executive branch agencies. Growth in union membership and representation has not only been important in the development of the national government, this is evidenced by these entities that have been created. These were the Federal Labor Relations Council, the Federal Service Impasse Panel, and the new Assistant Secretary of Labor for Labor Management Relations. The Federal Mediation and Conciliation Service, FMCS, already in existence, was given an expanded role in mediating negotiation disputes. The Civil Service Reform Act of 1978 was a law designed to reinforce merit principles, protect whistleblowers, delegate personnel authority to agencies, and make it easier to discharge incompetent workers. It created the Federal Labor Relations Authority, or FLRA, Office of Personnel Management, OPM, Senior Executive Services, SES, and Merit Systems Protection Board, or MSPB. One of the most important consequences of the Act was to place in statutory form, Title VII, many of the terms of executive orders, so that presidents no longer had the authority to regulate the process on their own. The National Labor Management Association is a national membership organization devoted to helping management and labor work together for constructive change. The net effect of these changes has been to put in place a complex and varied set of regulations governing a wide range of labor management relations in the national government service. The days of unilateral personnel management without participation of government employees represented by their unions is long gone. 